Okay. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live Land. This is the Clarion Live Open webinar. Today is Wednesday, the 30th of October, 2019. And with me is the ever busy Bruce Johnson. Hello, Bruce. John. Yeah, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Um, unfortunately, our times changed this weekend. Just a notice to everybody. And uh, and I'm going to say nothing. So. Really. <laughs> really. I, I, I I'm determined. I, this is my um my new leaf. I'm not going to say anything about it. Okay. Nothing. Nothing Good. at all. Well, we did. Several states actually have passed laws that uh, to get rid of it, but or to stay on daylight savings all the time, or daylight saving. That would be the best, in my opinion. I believe it's so as well, but it has to be approved by Congress. So I don't know. They're hopefully by next well, year they'll have it all sorted. Yeah, I mean they they you know this is something they can distract themselves with. Yeah, exactly. Bipartisan, so, I'm sure. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay. Anyway, we run on questions. So if there are no questions and we don't, we don't do anything, go home. Oh, Rob has a question. Let's open Rob's mic. Rob. Good morning. How are you? It's a fine day. We are well. So I was working on a NetTalk app, but I don't think this has anything to do with NetTalk. Talk. It was uh, working just fine, uh, but then I started running into uh, unable to frame transaction error 48 in saving a file, saving a record. And so I looked it up online and it said, well, just shut off the uh, RI transaction framing, which I did, and that worked, but is there a more elegant solution? Not that I know of. I just, I never have mine on. I always turn mine yeah. off. I turn mine off as well. Okay. Well, thank but you very much for your expertise. Someone else. <laughs> <laughs> that is the elegant solution as far as, as far as we know. <laughs> Don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was easy. That was easy. Thanks. Okay. Um, it's quiet. It's just quiet right now. Oh wait, we have another question. Oh, he just want to repeat the last last question. Rob was getting a transaction framing error, and he turned off the referential integrity in the in the global um, properties, I guess, and um, that took care of it. Shall I show where that is, Bruce? Oh, I guess I don't have to. I think everybody hopefully knows where that is. So Bruce, are you there? Sorry, 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 I was muted. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, yes, go ahead and show it. And then of course I'm muted so you can't see it. <clears throat> um, yes, Frank wants to see it. Frank does want to see it. Okay, yeah, no problem. So, global properties, actions. Oh, we gotta load up the ABC stuff. Storing information. Watch it go at the bottom. Almost done. Done. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> is it in file control? Right there. Yep. This. In fact, I don't even know why it's on. It should be off. There. And that's it. Because otherwise you get errors. Here you go. Peter asked any... Cave saw special pricing coming up. We're still on for CIDC. 
Yes, you just sent out an email, Bruce. I did, moments ago. Um, so yeah, the CIDC pricing will come to an end, end of day Thursday, which is the 31st of October. So it'll come to an end, end of this month. Um, if you, you can still order using CIDC prices, which generally speaking are about 20% off list price, give or take. Um, and you can order even if you weren't a CIDC attendee. But, and here's the secret, you must put CIDC pricing into the comments field when you order. If you don't put that in, no discount for you. So there you go. So Peter says, sorry, it was a long email and he couldn't see the pricing. Uh, oh my goodness, well, he it's... must read the entire email. <laughs> you have to read the whole email, Peter. That's that's the whole point. You yes. know, we send out detailed information and we slip in special uh, things along the way. Hey, Peter, how's it going? Is Peter there? I've opened your mic. <laughs> He's struggling with his mic. And he says, asking is easier. Yeah, yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> but you should read the email because there's lots of very important information in that email, things that you will want to know and need to know and should know. It's very important. There was a network update. So quickly, there was a network update. Um, if you are using Network 10 or Network 11 and you are talking to Let's Encrypt to get your certificates, you will need to update your server. Uh, I've made Network 10 build, 1040, and I've made a Network 11 build, 1124. You must upgrade. That is important. And it will become urgent. And we don't like to do things when they are urgent. We like to do them when they're important. So you must, must, must upgrade. Um, yeah, that's my public service announcement. Don't come crying to me when it all falls over. <laughs> Speaking of upgrading, we had talked about automating these updates earlier. And we talked about having some sort of API that I, I could call to see that if there was an update or not. And you said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but I don't know when that'll happen. But I've been looking at other ways. And so I went through and there, I have like, 10 or 11 things I need to update. I'm, I'm behind, right? So I was looking at Safe Reader. I can bring it over here because there's nothing, nothing to see. First of all, I actually I actually fired up the help. And I I never have looked anywhere. Like we, we can't any see it. Thing. So oh, you can't see it? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I no, I mean, I, you're not. We hide. We hide stuff in the help. The, so <laughs> you, it's a, I mean, secret. yeah. Well, the it's first secret. thing is, is I, I changed the font because I found that you could change the font. Huh, so I thought that good. was a good thing because uh, the safe key was always showing oddly there because of the MSN error for something. It didn't look right. Anyway, mm -hmm. now it looks right. So I was very happy about that. <laughs> that was in the help file, but I, I just never looked at your tools. Um, also has this version upgrade, which I uh, either doesn't work or there has not been a version upgrade forever. I think there hasn't been a version upgrade forever. Which no, it is hasn't been upgraded. Fine, except that this doesn't work. So no. this, this is the thing that bothers me. The I, most. I have it. However, yeah. I can fix. Okay. I can fix that, and I can fix that because I also found in the help that you can do command lines. Yes, you can. And so I could store my own save key, and just make my own interface to this and call it. Yes, so you can. I've got a lot of the, of the, the, the things that annoy me the most I can solve, except for finding out when they are, when there's the new API. ones. Okay. Right. But, but if you're not, if you don't want to do the API, I could fall back on your news feed. The RSS file. Yeah, I can do the API because I have to upgrade the site anyway, because of the Let's Encrypt stuff. So um, that'll be upgraded. Uh, within the next few days. Um, I've got a few days to do it, but um, yeah, and, and as you know, adding the API is trivial, so it's a data file. I'll give you access to the data file. <clears throat> Re-access to the, to the data file should be fine. 
easy peasy. Wizard up the API and then I'll let you know. So remind me on Monday or Tuesday. And hopefully by next Wednesday, you'll have it. That would be <clears throat> perfect because I can get the rest of the app uh, put together by then. Yeah. Okay. That's that's quicker than I thought it would be. No, I mean it's it's easy to add the API. That's no no big shake. Um, and uh, as I say, I have to update the site. It's it's a it's one of those sites where I've got a lot of servers running under one multi-host. And um, so I kind of have to do them all at the same time, but I have to do it because of the Let's Encrypt update. So I might as well do it. This is very exciting. Okay, so so what do you anticipate that the APIs will let me do? <clears throat> Get a list of current versions of all products? I, I would imagine it would be a standard API on that table. So you'd be able to what's what's in that table let me have a quick look on my side before i broadcast it but i don't think there's terribly much in there it's a simple enough table i guess i'd probably need a list of everything with their versions i could store that and then compare versions <clears throat> yeah then... and, and i imagine I, you would be able to filter on that some sort of uh date yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you could. You could do. I mean, there's a bunch of things to me. I'm just going to bring it up here so I can see it before I display it. But uh, see that there's nothing in there that you might not want to see. <clears throat> uh, and the I URL, so I could download them. I guess I would have to come over. Huh? Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. I'm going to maximize that. And go to there. I can share this. Can I share this? Can I share this? Just want to make sure there's no. I'm not. I'm not even going to update till I write this interface. <clears throat> um. Okay. I can share this. Uh, no. Make presenter. Probably. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah. So, so the the group yeah. ID you're looking for is five because we have different groups in this table. There's different kinds of things, and the one you're looking for is five client accessories. The rest, the stuff, not so much. Okay. Um, so we would we would do a filter where you set the group ID, which I'm guessing just five, or maybe I'd limit it to five, and so you'd get things like any font, description, a date, um, version number. URL, like standard that. URL. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, the C six one's not really interesting. The purchase URL, you wouldn't need the upgrade URL. Yeah, there you go. So you would just be looking at the name, the download URL, the version, the date. So an API yeah. that gives you back those kind of things, probably. Yeah, yeah. I would I want the description too. Oh, can I do that? Oh. Okay. And the um, the home URL. Pretty much the first two, three, four, five, the first, six columns. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably that. that group Wait, ID. And the group ID, well, from if you, depending on how you give it to me. I'd give you, I'd only give you group ID five. The others aren't going to be helpful. Yeah, so I don't, I don't need that then. Right. Yeah. So the, the yeah, well, maybe five and 11. Uh, where have you gone? There. Uh, 11 is old accessories. So some, I guess, like if we make, you know, a new version of something, we put the old one into the old. Um, so it's, it's there for downloading, but it's not current, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> so yeah, I'd filter it on 5 and 11. So I'd give you this product, I'd, I'd give you the group ID as well, so mm -hmm. that you knew they were oh, what they, what they belong to. That so they, yeah, that they're essentially like Sentry 2, right? There's a Sentry 3. So this this one's obsolete. Sentry 3 is wherever it is. Let me do oh, so, you, so the 11s are older versions? So <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So 11 is, is basically discontinued in the sense that it's 
it's not the current one. Okay. So you'll see there's lots of leavens for network, old networks and things like that. Old string oh, theory. This would be so nice. So, so if you look on our, if you look on our downloads page, essentially what you're seeing are fives and elevens. Okay, so our downloads page will have draw three on it. All right, because people still want to download that. But if you go to our accessories page, there's only draw four. That's the difference. This browse is filtered on group five. five. And this, this browse is filtered on 5 and 11, and, and you'd want this browse kind of thing. I mean, that's what you need here, is this browse. Yeah. Yeah, this will be, be nice. OK. I will uh, put something together between now and then, so it's all ready for the API calls. That sounds like a good idea. Um, Richard says, how do we get access to the CIDC sessions? Um, so let's, is Richard, a, was it Richard an attendee? I don't know. Uh, he says that he registered for the online training. Oh, okay. Um, if you registered for online training, Richard, you should be able to log in. Um, you would have got a mail with your login and password, but assuming you didn't have that, then your login should just be your email address and you can say reset password on the screen on the login screen, and it'll send you a new password. And then once you're in, there's a, a streaming button, which allows you to go and see all the sessions. .cdc2019.com. And you can log in. You put in your email address and reset password if you have to. And then if you go to streaming, there's all the sessions there. The two training sessions and all the conference sessions. Okay. Hopefully that helps Richard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wolfgang says it's a nice idea to write your own interface, John. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> okay. Rick Martin says don't pull a flint, whatever that means. Flint showed some sensitive information on the. Oh, oh yes, in his session, yes. Now that's why. I... Well, I, it, actually, he didn't. It was kind of inadvertent, <clears throat> I guess. It was a. The accident. Greg Bailey error, says, "Are yes. you going to allow downgrades? What do you mean by that, Greg? Greg, you there? Um, sometimes there are short-lived." Um, um, mistakes and you need to go back to a slightly older version to continue working until those are corrected. Ah, so you were asking John if he's going to cache the install files so that you can go back and reinstall an old one if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Just give it a name. Yeah. I'll, um... Yeah, I'll yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll keep all the installs in a folder or something, and you should be able to. I'll keep a log of when you downloaded <coughs> it, and when you installed it, and then you can go. Peter says, you "Are you cross-referencing replaced by with replaces?" I can only assume he meant something here. So sent to two is replaced by sent to three. Um, now I don't know that they do that specifically. Um, I don't know why you'd need to. Um, I know that there's an upgrade URL which references a Clarion Shop product number, but that's about it. Fifteen. So if there's an upgrade URL, it's been. It's been supplanted, yeah. Um, right, okay, well, that's easy enough then. And it's been supplanted by 15, 15, 56, but I don't know if that 15.56 comes out. That's a thing. 
Yeah, I know. That's a that's a clarence shop ID, not a not a Capesoft ID. No, I mean we don't particularly say, hey, this thing is replaced by this and this replaces that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure you need to know that. Hmm. I suppose I send you the upgrade URL, then at least you know it's old and ancient. Although you actually been told that by that thing there. The eleven, the group party, but then at yeah. least you'll know people know where to go. Yeah. Although I would tend to send them to the home URL, except in that case you don't have one, um, because obviously the they don't get a home URL if they're dead. Yeah, that's another way to to, to okay. look at it. The um, yeah. the thing is sometimes things re requirements change, so people go from you know um, network ten to eleven, and there are requirements with that. So. Going straight to the Clarence shop address isn't always perfect. People don't always read what the requirements are. But that's what we call due diligence. All right. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this will be fun. Nice little project. What should, what should we call it? It's, it's going to be ultimate what? I, I'm going to leave you to call it whatever you want. Okay. okay. Ultimate updates. John, are you going to remind people um, about the requirements? Because some upgrades do change the requirements. Um, as far as like what version of Clarion uh, or something like String that? String theory four oh, okay. I is now required instead of. Yeah, that's a matrix, a requirements yeah. matrix. That would have to be a separate table with a separate API, I guess, API because, because you know, that's going to, each product's going to have its own requirements. Yeah, that, that'd be in version two, probably. <laughs> version 2.1, I would, I would think. One. We'll see, we'll see what Bruce gives me with the API. And then we'll, we can, uh, Make modifications as we get requests, right? Sure. I mean, we can add more, obviously. Yeah. Ultimate Capesoft updates is what someone's suggesting it be called. Mark Goldberg wants to call it Ultimate Capesoft updates. It'd be nice if it could do updates for for other products, though. I know when Gary did uh, Clarion Desktop, he tried that. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I mean, the the other third-party people would have to have some sort of APIs as well. And every third-party would have their things. own system and their own everything. It, yeah, it was a lot of work. There was remarkably little overlap. I know you found it. You thought it was going to be like a little simple thing, and it degenerated very quickly. Hmm. But you know, these days, if you're not using Capsoft, then why? You know. <laughs> Ultimate seal get. There you go. I mean, you could have a central repository, <clears throat> right? Where yours yours has an API, so it could update itself, and then other people could manually update it. Yeah. They had a new version, and then it would all hit this one server for everything. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty of time. I got, I yeah, time. I, 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 I mean, I was young and naive once, and <laughs> uh, used to the third party in those days. And uh, I mean, I don't know, if, I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you were at that meeting in '99, the third party meeting. At I was, yes. DevCon '99, and if you ever wanted to see the the root problem of herding cats, I think that was that was my moment of where they were actually giving us what we actually asked for, and everyone was still actually unhappy. <laughs> it was like, okay, okay, yeah, it's a tough room, it was a tough room. It's a tough room, all right, well, we'll just do this one first, and then we can move to other products later, other vendors. I'll bet I could get Andy to do it, too. Yeah, I'm sure Andy would, yeah, that's the thing, you've got to get people to buy into it. Give me an API, Andy. John, 
you you need an an improved by ultimate uh, reinstall sticker to encourage third parties to uh, support you. You would think, Greg, but nobody cares. <laughs> stickers, <laughs> stickers. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you, uh, Greg's been around as, as well. You remember the C3PA and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the, and the bottom line is, because the customer doesn't care, the suppliers don't care. If well, unless, see, John, and, yeah, that's that's your that's your 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 whole thing. You got to make the customers care. That's why I say you got to have that ultimate sticker to make yeah. the customers care. Yeah, Bruce, I'll have to award you a sticker. <laughs> the, um, yeah, See, I, look, I, I don't, well, I don't just people who do it get bobbleheads at the next DevCon. <laughs> there you go. You See, there you go. Oh my gosh, those are prized possessions. There, those bobbleheads. There's only a few in the world. Limited edition. Yeah, limited Very edition. Limited. Very limited. Speaking of. Uh, I don't see any more questions at the moment. So, speaking of um, CIDCs, Bruce, what, what what have we been talking about? Well, it's in your newsletter. So, so in my newsletter, I mentioned it. The the there's there's been a swell of questions, interest, if you like, in doing an event in Cape Town in April of 2020. And so, I've been polling various people. Some of whom are very keen, some of whom are thinking about it, some of whom um, simply, it's too far. Um, but it's, 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 it's a long way. Let's, let's be bold. It's the, a long flight. The moon, but is, the moon is too far. This is not too far. It's, it's all not on the Mars. Same planet. Yeah, it's not exactly. Mars, yeah. It's not Mars. Um, so, so it it is, um, and a lot of people said they would bring their wives and stuff like that. So, the idea would be to have an event here. Obviously, get a, gather as many local attendees as we can, gather as many foreign attendees as we can, put something together. I have no budget. I have no venue. I have, well, I have a more or less an idea of dates. It would probably be first week in April, uh, first week, first weekend in April, somewhere around there. Um, because Easter kicks in later in April, and we get a lot of holidays over Easter, so getting anything done around Easter is going to be just a non-starter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go see a hotel tomorrow, which looks promising. They may have what we need, and hopefully they do, and then I won't have to waste too much time looking at hotels, and um, I'll keep everyone updated. But if this is something that sounds like it piques your interest, you think to yourself, hmm, Cape Town, that's a nice destination. Let me take the wife and go for a bit of a holiday. Do a couple of days of conferencing, write the trip off to tax. Um, then, uh, then send me a mail. Let me know if you're interested. And uh, I, will, I will keep everyone appraised as I know, as and when. And uh, we'll, I don't know the format or anything yet. Andy Wilton is coming. Um, so we'll do some Noantis training. We'll do some Cape Town, uh, Cape Soft training. John is coming. So we'll do the streaming and videoing and everything we can, if we can. Yeah, and depending on the, on the internet, I guess. You guys on, have on the internet. internet there, right? Uh, we, we have very good internet in Cape Town. I've, we've, I've got fiber uh, into, oh, yeah. into my house, fiber into the home, all that kind of stuff. So that's not a problem. Hotels, on the other house. hand. <laughs> that would uh, that would be cool. The Capesoft, we could probably, uh, except for the Capesoft office is an office, so it's not really laid out for it. But if there were six of us, we could do it here. Um, yeah, the uh, I'm hoping the hotel has got decent internet. There's no reason they shouldn't have, and we should be able to stream. So I'm hopeful, not necessarily confident, but hopeful, and. Um, yeah, so that'll be CIDC 2020 Africa. Dum dum dum. Further than you've ever been before will be our tagline. There you Something go. like that. Um, so probably, but yeah, yeah. Hmm? Might, maybe we should send out a um, survey monkey thing like we do for the normal CIDC. Well, I'll know more tomorrow. So, so once we, once we know more or less the date, the venue, the price, then it becomes a little bit easier to to yeah. give people information. At this stage, it's kind of like, well, we think that date, assuming we can get a hotel, assuming 
everything. And then from a pricing point of view, obviously, I, I haven't got a clue yet. I, I would have to work out a rough budget and um, get some idea of what things cost to run past John and see what, what it is. Um, April in South Africa. Wolfgang wants to know if that's short trousers. Um, so April is our transition month. It's usually very good. It's kind of autumn for us. I would best describe it similarly to maybe October or November up north, depending, although your, you guys in November can start getting really cold, which would be more like May for us. So yeah, first week in April, we should have good weather. Um, the wind should be gone by then. But hey, we live in an era of climate change, so <laughs> who knows? Um, I'll still be in shorts yeah. in April. Yeah. yeah. Shorts. I'll still be in shorts. Um, maybe not so much a beach weather. I don't know. You'd have to be a kind of a beach fanatic to go to the beach in April. But yeah. hey, lots of people do. So what do I know? But in Cape Town, we've got so many things to do as well. It's a wonderful tourist destination. Um, obviously, we've got the cable car, which goes up Table Mountain. You get to stand on top of the mountain without actually doing any work. Um, you get to go to Cape Point, where the two oceans meet. You get to see the penguins. So we've got a penguin colony uh, on the coast that you can go and swim with the penguins if it makes you happy, or you can go walk with the penguins, that kind of thing. You can take, um, you can take one home with you. You can just pick um, them up. No, they, no, you're not allowed to touch them. <laughs> oh, oh. And, and I suspect they frown deeply on taking them home. Although, funny enough, if you live in the area, for a long time they had a problem with penguins, they would come and nest in your garden. And they, they nest by digging like a burrow type thing, which may or may not be what you want for your garden. So, um, yeah, if you lived in that little area, kind of between the sea and the road, then uh, there was a certain amount of local, like, um, Less enamorment with having a penguin as a pet. Um, so, and then there's there's oh, so many other things. I mean, we obviously got all the wine farms. If you're into wines and things like that, there's quite a bit of history around. If you're into history, there's uh, the various kind of touristy places like the waterfront, and uh, yeah, lots and lots of things to do. Um, last time John was here, he went skydiving, shark diving went on a kind of a day safari type thing. Would you describe it as that? Sort of like a, a game, he went to a game park. Um, mm -hmm. You went diving in the aquarium, didn't you? There's the aquarium. I did, yeah, I might do it yeah, again. So, that's, so the waterfront's got an aquarium, which you don't have to dive in, but you can if you're, uh, I suppose you have to be some sort of qualified diver or something. You do. I don't know. <clears throat> and um, yeah, you can dive with the sharks and things like that. There were sharks in your tank, weren't there? Because you would have, you would have dived in the yeah you would have dived in the big tank. Yes, yes, I went in the big tank, not one of the smaller ones, but yes, one of the big ones. It was kind of interesting because I've been in a couple of aquariums. I've been in the one in Orlando, it's like the second largest in the world, and in that one you just there's sharks in there too, but yeah, not very big. And you go in there and you just you can swim wherever you want. At one in um, Cape Town, you he takes you in and there's like really big sharks in there. And so you kind of go down to the bottom and then you go slowly around the entire thing. It's like a big circle and all these sharks are swimming up above you. So you look up and you see this very large shark cruising by up above you and there's turtles in there and all sorts of the things. So it's kind of a, you just, you just don't go in and swim around basically. You just <laughs> stay close to the bottom. And Tricky to go in after feeding time. The yeah, after yeah. feeding time. Not right yeah. before feeding time. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty neat little uh, little dive. Yeah. So so if you do come out, um, we will definitely look after you and give you lots of ideas of touristy things to go and do and see and have a wonderful time. Plan to spend about a week, I would say, um, outside of the conference time, and you would you would certainly have plenty to do in a week. No no shortage. Uh, depending on what kind of things you like to do. There's so many different options. Right, back to the questions. Um, Alejandro says, Cape Town, wait for me. Um, yes, Alejandro, that would be wonderful. And it's quite quick to get you from uh, Buenos Aires. So uh, it's, I believe, a direct flight. It used to be a direct flight from Buenos Aires to Cape Town. I don't know if it still is. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to go look. Uh, Bob says, it appears that Noantis trading sessions one and two are still not available on CIDC 2019. Is this right? It is, Bob. 
John will now tell you all about why. I will tell you why. Um, <coughs> so the idea was to be able to do both training sessions with the same type of quality, which means that we wanted to have cameras in both rooms and um, both be streaming to YouTube. And it took us all day and we set up the big room. And then we set up small, the smaller training room uh, for Noantis was. And we had everything all set up, but we were having um, issues with the stream. And it was late in the day and we couldn't get the EV guy down to test it out or, or get it working or whatever. So the next morning, we're trying to get both rooms going. And if you were there, you, you know that there was a little bit of a delay because we were trying to get Noantis going and we couldn't quite get it going. Then we got Bruce's going. And then we were back working on Noantis. And Noantis was running late and we couldn't quite get it. So we really didn't have a backup quite figured out except for to use GoToWebinar. So we did that. We did GoToWebinar. Um, and we were about, I guess, about a half hour late. Anyway, so we got that up and going. We had to get the links out to people so they could see it. Um, we put it up. We ran back over to Bruce's, the big room. We did it, you know, over there. Apparently, we didn't. We didn't monitor the webinar because we didn't have the we didn't have the links for it, I guess, although I think we could have probably figured it out, but we were just at that point we were kind of exhausted. Anyway, so Andy just got it going. He left the webinar running. We had a break, he left it running, so we have a long bit of recording of webinar, uh, which are parts one and two. So I went to break them apart, and part one has audio, but there's no video. All there is is the go to webinar backdrop. And when the break came, suddenly his screen came up. Now I don't, I don't think that he randomly turned his screen sharing on at the break. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if he forgot to do it at the beginning or if something happened. But the first hour is audio only. The second hour, I have the whole thing. So I have to still go and break it up. I got to break up the second part. But Andy says he's going to do the redo the first part. I don't know when he's going to do that because he's been super busy since he got back so this weekend I will sit down and break it apart when I break it apart I have to split it I have to re-render everything it takes a lot of my computer time up but I'll try and schedule it at some time when I can do that we will do it at, in the evening so in the morning it's all done and I'll get that posted up so we'll have part two that should be up finally next week and so my apologies for taking so long to do that and then Andy has to redo the, the first part now I could put the audio up only for the first part I guess until um until he redoes it, and that might help. I don't know how how helpful that would be, but anyway, that's that's the story. <laughs> we we did the best we could. Um, we eventually we got it working after lunch, and you know you've seen all those; those all came up just fine. And that's the story. It was a lot of running around, a little bit of chaos that first that first morning, but uh, everything got sorted. And I think we're going to try maybe not to do simultaneous again. It's much easier to set up one room and everything works than to try to do two rooms and yeah it's also to it's easier to, to debug one room in in the sense of oh, yeah yeah i think i think part of it was that you felt you know because the two streams had to get started then you're dashing back to one room to start it you're coming back to this room it's like the, the 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 it's a lot of work for what was very few people so either we need more people in that loop as it were um or Technical people yeah or yeah, technical type people, and then I, th I think it also. I mean, it is very difficult with these with these hotels. I don't know if, if for folk who are listening and, and perhaps haven't done, you know, dealt with the hotel and so on. But typically, what happens is we set up the day before, and and the setup takes substantial amount of time and effort. Um, and in fact, usually what happens is you set it up, and then you discover okay, this sound isn't coming through here, or that picture's not coming through there, and so on. And that's usually on a Sunday, and then they've got to go find an AV guy and, and so on and so on. So usually what happens is on the Monday morning, which is when you can get an AV guy, they come in and kind of troubleshoot it, as it were. They come in and snag it, all the little things that aren't working. And trying to do that in two rooms is... is <laughs> yeah, we found out it wasn't, it wasn't the... Uh, it's ambitious, yeah. yeah. So it, it is difficult, and, and obviously um, you know, everyone apologizes for the, for the mix-up, but... Uh, we will um, get it up as get soon it. as we can. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely get part. I'll just go ahead and throw the audio up for now. It's only it's an hour is all we really missed as far as video goes. So I'll just go ahead and split it and 
get those put up this weekend. And at least we'll have that, you know, and um, go from there. Yeah. Well, that's how we get better at these things, hey? We, uh, yeah, we discover yeah. what works, and then, okay, we need to do this, and we need to do that. And I think in future, we'll have to make sure there's an audio, uh, an AV guy there. Sunday well, there was. It just, it just took us a while to set up that big room, because we, we started setting it up. Um, Rob and I started setting it up for, at about 9 in the morning, I think. And I think we finished around 6. I think it seems like it the day went by pretty quickly <laughs> yes. like all of a sudden it was like the evening and we're like oh okay and then yeah the av guy had, he was there pretty much all day and helped us quite a bit getting all the internet and the audio set up but for whatever reason it took like a couple hours to get the audio so it was clean and i don't know why that took so long but that definitely slowed us down so my next uh acquisition will be a mixer board and probably the mics too so we'll bring our own sound this time and all they'll have to do is hook up the speakers, and that way we'll know that I'm getting that we're getting a clean signal into the computer. I won't have to mess with their little adapters and things. So anyway, that's my my next thing. Um, Carl wants to know if Andy's training materials are available yet. Um, almost, 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 almost. Um. I believe they'll be up by tomorrow. And I've got Reese's ones as well. So they'll be up tomorrow oh, as well. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. We seem to be not answering any actual questions, but hey. Oh, good to bring people up to speed, right? See, now, what's now, happening? <laughs> see, I think Carl's in Cape Town as well. So if we had an event in Cape Town, I think Carl has to come. I think it's a moral like obligation. Uh, he uh, he doesn't get a choice. Yeah. What do you think, Carl? He says he's coming. There you go. Got one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> On your way. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. One of the things that um, obviously affects budgeting and so on is 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 volume. There there is a the off fixed costs. So when you have too small a group, then then it becomes very expensive. And so hopefully we can get a largish group, both on site and then potentially online as well, if we if we've got the internet, and um, and that helps to kill kill off some of the fixed costs, which is uh, yeah, yeah. The budgeting for these things can be festive, but it looks. I, I I'm hopeful, as I say. I'm hopeful we can do it for a number which works for everyone. Well, back in the day, they used to have clarion conferences every year, right? It was every September or something. They did. They did. We didn't. Uh, well, it was multiple times a year because we were in, in Fort Lauderdale in 97, 98, 99. And then we had CID, uh, we had ETC in 98 as well. We had a Euro DEFCON in 98 as well. There was an Australian DEFCON in 98. 98 was a busy year, I'll be honest. Um, 99, I was in Argentina. Um, 2000 obviously was ETC again. I was in Brazil in 99. I might have been Argentina 98, Brazil 99, something like that. But that kind of that kind of period of, of the late 90s, there were a lot of events um, going on all over the place. But again, to some extent, pre-internet, pre-webinars and things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, much more reliance on the, the kind of physical user groups, people getting together and that kind of thing. I think when we... We did the world tour in 2006 and 2007. Um, and then we did the uh, worldwide web shot in, in, in 2009. So I was in Australia and Europe and so on in 2009. And that's when we did the CL, no, 2010, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Chicago was 2010, right. So it was 2010. Um, there was an Auss Aussie DevCon in 2009, that's right. But yeah, there, there used to be quite a lot of them. But I think with all the webinars, and you know, it's not a coincidence, Clarin Live started 2008. And the, the sort of physical get-togethers have dropped right off since then because we get together so often virtually. But um, it is still useful and it's it's nice to get together. I think we see that in, in Florida. I think we see that wherever we get together with people. Um, I know in, in the Netherlands, they've got a, uh, a human get-together going on. Um, uh, the, sometime in October, I believe it was. Um, 
so yeah it is nice to get together with folks from time to time and and uh, who knows if this works out maybe in other odd years we can go to other places around the world and do that kind of uh, one in australia or one in europe or whatever but obviously we need to see if it works um to do it like this so it'll be a smaller smaller event obviously not going to go anywhere near as large as <laughs> not even not even like pretending to be anywhere as large as as uh, florida but uh, i think that'll still be the flagship one you're, you're thinking yeah. around 20 people or, or so i i you know it's it's one it's a complete thumbs up right um i i think probably something like 20 south africans something like that maybe more maybe less who knows i mean it, it, we haven't had anything yeah, here <laughs> you know i mean we we did we were here in 2009 we did a, a web shop or 2010 2010 we did a web shop in cape town 2007 we did something in joburg pretoria really pretoria um but it's really hard uh, it's it's really really hard to know you know um who would who would go to an event i mean we see a reasonable number of south africans go to florida so i'm guessing there's some demand um and if nothing else people get to meet hopefully some of the people they've they've met online and i think that's a that's a big plus of it as well yeah but um uh, who knows it could be could be 20 of us could be 10 of us i don't know we'll have to wait and see could be none of us could be none of us i'll be there no matter what well, <laughs> I'm blocking out April to come to South Africa, so there you go. <laughs> I know, I know, Andy's keen as well. So I mean, I think, I think it, you know, if it, if it is a really tiny group, then we'll be, we'll we'll have ambition to match that. But um, I'm hoping that we'll get, you know, twenty to thirty people, and then it's a then it's a nice group size. Um, we get one or two speakers out. Yeah, yeah, and who knows? Look, I mean, most guys haven't been to Cape Town. Most most Karen guys have had, have never been to Cape Town. And it's a little bit exotic, a little bit further than you've been before, a little bit kind of out of the way. So probably not a place you'd get to visit normally. And um, yeah, so so definitely worth thinking about. Definitely we'll worth thinking about. Have to put the Cape Soft office tour on the agenda. <laughs> on the agenda. I, I, everyone is most welcome to come visit our office. I don't know if it's a tourist attraction, especially when you start listing all the others. But uh, of course, um, everyone is most welcome to come visit us. We, uh, we have a coffee machine and we will happily make some coffee. I say a coffee machine. It's a coffee pot, I suppose is a better description. We don't have a fancy machine. We have a coffee pot. But um, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll, we'll obviously, anyone who does come out, we'll make sure you have a good time and point you in the right direction and tell you what to go and do on the stand that day and the other day, give you some help with planning. And apparently most people I spoke to you are bringing wives. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is a nice place to have a holiday. It is genuinely a very nice holiday destination because there are so many different things and so many different um, kind of holiday types that you can that you can allow for you can do the adrenaline thing or you can do the nature thing there's so many walks on the mountains and things like that um the penguins seals sharks whatever you're into yeah and you were you were thinking um thursday thursday friday training and uh saturday maybe a day and a half of of a conference Con type at, yeah, I mean, at the moment, that's 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 really just trying to. I don't have a, a format fixed, but Andy's coming out, so he'd do a day of training. I'd be happy to do a day of training. Um, how much conferencing we do depends completely on you know how many sort of sessions we come up with, speakers and things like that. Um, we'd want to get a bit of variety in that. I'm thinking probably this Saturday, maybe half of Sunday. You know, finish off. So Sunday after lunch, something like that. I don't know. Uh, it, it 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 all depends on who signs up and and really what they're looking for. Um, my gut is that that for people who are working for themselves, I'm talking about locals now. It's a little bit easier to get away over the weekend. Um, to get away for four days is probably quite difficult if they do two days of training and ultimately two days of conference when you put the flying in and stuff like that. So doing it over the weekend suits people who are working for themselves. Um, uh, people who work as employees are uh, somewhat less keen to give up their whole weekend. Um, I understand that too. So um, they may be more keen on Saturday and less keen on the Sunday. So we might have to play around with that a little bit. I don't know. 
<laughs> I really don't know. Um, but but that sort of time frame, yes. First week in April type time frame. And then we're, when people are keen and saying, then perhaps you do a little survey and say, what what's the best kind of, is it not weekend or is it just Saturday or is it, you know, just the week and try and get some balance there. Obviously, for you guys coming from OCs, it doesn't make too much difference one way or the other. It's just another day. But um, for locals, it can be it can be an issue if they can get off work or not get off work or things like that. So, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. It's all very speculative at the moment. So if you have any thoughts, <laughs> if you'd like to come, let me know. And um, I will include you in conversations and, and get, you know, poll your opinions and things like that. So. All right. Well, I reckon we can wrap it up there, John. I'm not seeing any other questions. I think so. I think so. So uh, just a totally unrelated news. So last time I was there, Bruce, you had just gotten a 3D printer. I did. Yes, yes, we've got a 3D printer. Yeah. And just yesterday, I bought myself a 3D printer. Oh, cool. They are kind of cool. <laughs> just, aren't they? just yesterday. Yeah. But it was like way cheap. It was like, it was like $270 for mine. <laughs> Ours was more than that. <laughs> I know. Yours was more than that. I, I, I remember. Was more than more than it was back in the but day. It's been yeah. many years, many years after. And it's a, it's a resin type um, printer. So I'm kind of interested to see how that works. It's coming today. I don't have it yet. It's supposed to be arriving today. Cool. You can make CRDC logos or something. Yeah, I could do, I could do that. It's, typically, I'll be printing out um, Starship Enterprises, probably first thing. See how they turn out. Yep, that's that's the, the call says my kids are loving their 3D printer. What did you get? It's a, um, it's a Mars printer. And what 3D software are you going to use? Bobbleheads for your. Uh... Yeah, I make my own bobbleheads now. <laughs> right. Exactly. For those uh, vendors who settle up right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like I could make my own if I had any talent for doing that. Yeah, I mean, the, the 3D program, I know from our one, the 3D program is a big deal. Um, Carl mm -hmm. Robinson says he's using Ender 3 Pro. Um, but it, I, I was amazed. I was trying to use a version of AutoCAD, and it, it like, it, if you say unintuitive, you, you don't begin to understand how, I mean, I've used computers most of my life, and I couldn't draw a straight line. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I, there's other guys here who do, who do, I'm not sure what they're using, but I, I struggled. <laughs> I really struggled. Yeah. I had the sort of like consumer, no training required intro version of whatever it was. It wasn't AutoCAD, it was, but it was by them. And it was impossible. I don't know. So I, I got other people to do the work. But I think it's come a long way. That was over 10 years oh, ago. Well, wow. it was 10 years ago because you were here 2010. I want to say 2010. But it may have been um, 2011 or 13 even. No, it wasn't 13. That's it was for you, you had a, a special um, net talk thing. Net, net talk came out for six. I might have said net talk six. So that would have been 2011. Yeah, I mean, um, but we'd had the print a little bit before then. But yeah, no, they are very cool. They are very cool. And, and very hypnotic to watch. Very hypnotic. It's kind of goes zzz, zzz, zzz. two hours later, you're still staring at it. It's like watching paint dry. in 2013. I feel like it was after the, the CIDC. Yeah, but we had one in 11, so I, that's why I think it was after 11. But it could be 13. Uh, that was the first one. That was see, that was the first one. Though. I don't I don't remember traveling after the first one. I, I think it was after the second one. It could be. I mean, I could look it up. Or you know? it could be 12. <laughs> I could somewhere it could be 12. I feel like I feel like I could look it up. Yeah, let's have a look. See. Okay. And bring it, bring an end to both this conversation and this webinar, yes. which is yes, it's time to time to go, right? Yeah. Okay. So we, we what we're looking for is find version version six. Uh, all right, you make me do this the hard way. Eight five. Yeah, you see five is, is running there. Yeah, it was 2013. You think so? That's yeah. December. I think it was the Network 6 you came out for. 
I don't know. Let's see when seven was released, because definitely November. Right. It was like early December, late November, wasn't it, that you came out? Yeah, but I thought it was, this was like a Cape Vember thing, and it was it was like the last week in November or something. Okay, let's let's look at seven. Yeah, it could have been. You see, <laughs> there we go. It's it's also it's December thirteen, December twenty twelve. I think that's when it was. I think it was twenty twelve. Uh, I feel like you came out right behind the <laughs> conference. I did, but this, but oh, after twenty thirteen, you don't think it was in the no, no, because no, that's the point. All but... right, well, I'll I'll look up my tickets or something. I'm sure they're still in my email. So when was eight? I have, I have pictures. I have photos. Yes, I could. I could. I've got videos, so we could look at the date on the videos. So. Could be twenty thirteen. Yeah. No, you see, eight comes out yep. March twenty fourteen. No, I think it was two. Just look at when the webinar is. Go to the clarionlive dot com and look look up the webinar because there was one from broadcast and also live with... from there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to be well before then. That's two thousand eighteen. We're going to go back a little way here. Yeah. I mean, that's one way to settle it, I think. You could probably look, click on my name too. As, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. No. It, yeah, it wasn't not. 13. See, because 13, if we look here, there's no network release in, in no. November, oh, December. Yeah. 13. No. I'm pretty sure it was a, a November type thing because you had a big party at the end of it and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that was the network release. We had that in 30, 230 in... in November part five. That's, yeah, that's that, was, that, was, that was 2012. I feel like you came out in a webinar year. Yeah, maybe I did. <laughs> How quickly did <laughs> I forget? <laughs> November 25th, right reports. That's well, it's not 2011, that's for sure. No, yeah, well, let's have a look. See here, there, Network Session Launch, November 18, 2011. And I kind of feel like you were out for that week, that last week in November, because that, I mean, I know it was that end of the year because it was windy, and, and um, yeah, that's when we well, can it's windy. It's windy. It's definitely. Yeah. All right, people are just listening to us babble, so I guess it's time to go. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. For showing up, even though we didn't do a whole lot of clarion uh, solving of issues or anything, but you're up to speed. You know what's uh, going on, I guess. So, with that, we will. Uh, what's happening tomorrow, Bruce? Tomorrow, tomorrow is the Net Talk webinar, and we um, will be answering all questions Net Talky, including the 1024 build. Uh, sorry, the 1040 build and the um, 1124 build. Yeah. Looking forward to that. What's happening on Friday, John? Actually, um, I don't even have to ask you. I can just go. You to... don't. It's right there. For some reason, it's actually posted. A demo there program you. written Clarin, Wayne Hodge. Yes, it's a um, auction thing. Yeah, and, it, and he's integrated video and all sorts of cool things with it. So uh, he's going to be demoing that. So that's happening. Okay, that's it. Thanks everyone for showing up, and uh, we'll see you guys around. Bye, everybody. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>